Hello again, this is Randy back in the shop. Uh, today's project is going to be uh, working on a four nine inch, putting a new ring and pinion in it. I have it all disassembled. I have the pinion support here, and this is the the spool with the new ring gear installed on it. I have to put Loctite on the bolts and tighten that down. This is the the pinion gear right here, going from a 514 gear to a uh, 411 because the previous owner only ran the car on eighth mile and a friend of mine that bought the car, um, he's going to run at quarter mile so that's why the gear change. Um, this is what they call a pro gear which the material on a pro gear is a little bit softer than your standard ring and pinion and that way you don't <clears throat> the the teeth don't um shatter from the load um the pro gear being softer will wear more you can't run a pro gear in like a street uh application type thing because they don't last but uh, um so that's the name of that um, this has got a, uh, your normal four nine inch is a 28 spline pinion. This is, has a 35 spline pinion. So this is, the pinion is actually bigger than your standard nine inch four. And that's why they call it a pro gear. So <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, get these bolts here, lock tight it in place, get them torqued down. Uh, torque them to 100 foot pounds and we'll get that part done get the bearings pressed on and uh, then we'll we'll uh, work on this pinion support and I'll be right back All right, I got you over at the press here now. And uh, we're gonna press these carrier bearings onto the carrier. <clears throat> Make sure this is lined up straight. Looks like it is. Let me go get the other bearing and we'll put the other bearing on. Good and straight there. Yep.
here we go carrier bearings are all pressed on and I'll meet you back over at the bench all right carrier bearings are all pressed on <clears throat> this is the installer I made um, it's undercut here because this uh, the bearing sits actually below the surface of this the spool itself the spool is a little bit proud right here over the top of the bearing so I had to undercut this installer so that it it pressed down only on the race of the bearing <clears throat> now I'm gonna get ready to install the races in this center support here in this pinion support but they had the, the bolts when they installed them they had no washers on the bolts and the bolts actually um, compressed the aluminum so before I put the bolts back in with the washers I'm going to spot face this area back flat and that way um, the washers will sit down flat on this aluminum when I tighten it in the, in the differential housing. So I'll get that set up and I'll be right back. Alright, I got this all set up. I got a spot facing end mill in there. Here we go. They're all spot faced, all cleaned up. And uh, now we're ready to put the races in. I'll get this part cleaned up and I'll meet you back at the bench. Be right back. Oh boy. All right, I'm back. Um, it's been a couple days since uh, I filmed the first part of this because I got ready to put the races in the uh, pinion support and found out I didn't have any races so I had to order those those came so I'm gonna get ready to put those in and then on the pinion gear I'll press the pinion on the pinion shaft um, Ford 9 inch does not use a spacer behind here to set the pinion depth like GM and uh, Chrysler do on the GM 10 and 12 and and uh, the truck rear ends and stuff, they use a spacer behind here <clears throat> to shim the pinion to get the right depth. Um, on a Ford, you've got these shims here. These are your pinion shims, and they go between the pinion, pinion support and the case and that's that's how you shim the pinion on a Ford so I'll get these races knocked in here and I'll get the bearing pressed on the on the pinion gear and then um, uh, we'll set the bearing preload see if I can just tap that in with a hammer here I think I'm going to go over to the press. I'll be right back. All right, got both these races pressed in here. And uh, took quite a bit of pressure to uh, press this one in. And I got the pinion bearing, the rear pinion bearing pressed on the pinion. <clears throat> and this uses a 
solid pinion bearing preload spacer normally you just have a crush sleeve and a crush sleeve when you tighten it down when you tighten a nut down on the pinion after <coughs> it's on like this here and the other bearing goes on from the top this there's a crush sleeve in between the two this goes on here like this and your other bearing slides on the top like this here slide down the, on the top and that crush sleeve when you when you tighten the nut down on the top to preload on the bearing that sleeve will actually crush and what that sleeve does is it keeps the inner race of the front pinion bearing from spinning because it keeps pressure on it <clears throat> with this here you don't have anything to crush it's just solid and it's got little shims inside that you select to get the right amount of bearing preload this is the old one here nothing wrong with it, it could use it over but I'm going to mic to see how much um, what the what the shim thickness is and I'll put the sh same shim thickness in the new sleeve and then put it together torque the nut down on the pinion and we'll check the preload to see how much preload it has let me get a micrometer out here and I'll mic this up for a second Got twenty thousands. Set that aside. Take our shims here. We'll select a twenty thousand shim. Seventeen. Seven and a half, ten. So this should be 20 right here. 
19 thousandths. We'll try it here. Let's see what that does for it. <clears throat> that goes on there like that. This sits on top of there. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. This goes on here like this. Bearing. Slides on the pinion. Yoke goes on. Nut started. A new nut right here. Clamp this yoke in the vise, and I'll get a wrench in the socket here, and we'll tighten it down. Let me swing it around here so you guys can see this here.
much. Can't move it. All right. Pull the pinion back off, get the yoke back off here, and give it some more shim. All right, got this pinion support all assembled. Um, preload set, the pinion nut torqued, the pinion nut torqued down to 150 foot pounds and put red Loctite on it. And I've got an old beam style inch pounds torque wrench here. <clears throat> and put this on a nut here. And you're not going to be able to see this, but what you're looking for is 20 inch pounds of torque it takes to turn this. Once the, once the breakaway happens, the continuous turning, you're looking at about 20 inch pounds, and that's what they recommend for preload. Um, this is an old Craftsman. Um, inch pounds torque wrench they probably don't even make these anymore but uh, um, <clears throat> it's fairly accurate and, and uh, does what you need to do to check it so <clears throat> now what we have to do is the differential case you have to set the the carrier with the ring gear in the differential case and uh, kind of get the preload on those bearings set and then we'll put the pinion support in actually I think I'll put the pinion support in first <clears throat> there's the <clears throat> the center section of the of the case I'll probably put that pinion support in first and uh, we'll shim it up the way they had it and then we'll put the ring gear with the carrier assembly in and <clears throat> see what the see what the pattern looks like on the ring gear these go on here like this here that and this pinion support drops right in <clears throat> it's got a hole here which feeds oil to the bearings the pinion bearings in this here to hold this in place putting hardened washers on these pinion support bolts and that way the <clears throat> the bolts don't dig into the aluminum like before We 
these pinion support bolts they get torqued to 40 foot pounds once we get everything set here I'm just tightening them hand tight just snugging them up with a wrench flip this over like that these here are your side adjusters and those get threaded into the case just like so off one thread here here we go <clears throat> grab the ring gear with the spool These caps are marked with a mark here. This one goes on this side. And the other one is marked the same way. Only the arrow is turned turned up. And that one gets installed on this side here. Just like that. All right, I got the caps in, installed. Um, these cap bolts get torqued to 100 foot, 120 foot pounds. And you can see the, the amount of backlash that I have. And we adjust the backlash by turning these adjusters. Um, I gotta get a wrench to adjust those with. Be right back.
what you're looking for is you want with a new ring gear you want about four thousandths backlash if it was a used ring gear you'd want about eight to ten because the the gear is going to wear that much once it breaks in Now I'll get an indicator out here and we'll check it, see where we're at. That's 15, 15 thousandths, we've got ways to go here. That's 10.
four thousandths right there. Let me bring it in here so you can see that. All right, now I gotta mark the gear up and we gotta check the pattern on it. And I'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> here they're showing the, the correct pattern. This is the load side of the gear here. And this is the coast side of the gear. And bring it over to the ring gear here. <clears throat> this is the load side and you can see the pattern there bring this around a little more here you can see it right there too see where the pattern is on the gear that's that's about where you want it right there like that and uh, the load side or the coast side I should say is about like that right in the center of the tooth um, hopefully you can see that that should be good and we'll put the put the lock tabs in here for these adjusters that's when I sing about the the uh, nine inch Ford um, because the Chrysler and the GM you have to put shims in you have to put shims in between the bearing cap and the housing um, to, to shim your case from right to left or left to right and you have to put shim behind the front pin bearing to set your pin in depth um, that's why these are so popular because they're so easy to set up the other ones you can do there you can do but you got to do a lot more figuring because to get your pin in depth right um, you either have to add or subtract shim which involves uh, pressing the um, the bearing out of the cam sh out of the off the uh, pinion gear you have to press the bearing off the pinion gear and uh, you have to add or subtract from one side to the other of the shims for setting your preload and your ring gear spacing on the, on the pinion gear where the ring gear and the carrier fits in the case. Um, it's got shims like this here. It uses these thick shims. And um, a lot of times the kits will come with shims like this here with a bunch of thin ones. And uh, you have to keep track of uh, where your shims came from when you took it apart and you need to mic them with a mic micrometer and then um, you have to just subtract from one side and add to the other depending on if it's too far away or <clears throat> vice versa so this is relatively simple um, but anyway that's uh, about the end of this project I'm gonna get them little tabs put on there um, the pinion support also has an o-ring like this here that seals the support to the differential housing <clears throat> I gotta put that on the pinion support get the pinion support torqued down and then um, this project here will be done so I hope you learned a little something I hope you enjoyed it 
And if you have any questions, why give give me a shout, and uh, we'll be talking to you later. Have a great day. Bye.